small flies work better than large flies. Would you say that's a true statement? Can you catch more fish if you consistently use small flies and maybe even super small flies? And do you think you need more skill to fish the small fly? All of these questions were answered in my podcast with Ed Engel back in the day. A number of years ago, Ed was on and we've uh, been going back to some of the past episodes, some of our most listened to episodes. And uh, today we're going to be doing a short snippet episode where we're going to be sharing the top takeaways and tips from that episode on fishing small flies so you can have better action this year. Hey, I'm Dave, host of the Wet Fly Swing podcast. I've been fly fishing since I was a little kid, and I have created one of the largest fly fishing podcasts in this country. In this podcast, Ed shared the tips on fishing small flies, especially when focused on the wintertime, and uh, and we dig into that deep on the episode. Today, you're going to get the five biggest takeaways and tips from the podcast I had with Ed Engel, especially where it's focused on fishing uh, small flies in the wintertime. By the end of this episode, you're going to have a few actionable steps to take to elevate your fishing experience, especially when small flies are needed. But before we get into this episode, I want to share a quick story about fishing small flies. And this one is a little bit of a spin because uh, we're going to be focusing on trout. But uh, I have a great story as a steelhead angler and the difference of small flies and, uh, and how that works so well with steelhead. This kind of goes back, uh, long story short, to uh, the first days when Paul, a buddy of mine, started fishing down there on the river. And we just started fishing smaller and smaller flies. I think at the time, you know, commonly size twos and fours were pretty common. But we got into fishing, you know, a lot more commonly size sixes, eights, and even size ten. And for steelhead, I think a lot of people at the time might have thought that was kind of a small fly. But... We did that, and it worked even better and better. In fact, the smaller, the sparser, I think the more buggy it it got, the better. And I think there was some people, myself included, that thought, you know, fish need a a little bit of bigger profile to see the fly, especially in low light conditions. And and there was a morning I remember very well. I've talked about this on the podcast before. It was one of those mornings where you had to get out early because there was a lot of people on the river. And that morning I was out there in the spot, uh, well before light, this is in the morning, I think it might have been at least half an hour, maybe an hour before light. I was sitting there on the bank and and I heard some people rummaging around trying to get in because I knew I was in one of the good spots. And so I just kind of, you know, got out in the water and, uh, and this is a big river, but I kind of got out there and it was pretty much dark and I took my rod because I kind of saw these people and I wanted to kind of let them know I was out there getting ready. So I just cast that fly out there just to you know, kind of let them know, hey, I, I had this spot. And uh, and sure enough, I think it was the, it might have been the second just little flick out there. Uh, I hooked up with the steelhead. It was dark, completely dark, and that fish uh, hammered it, and uh, and it was a fish on. So that, I always think about that story when I think about fish eyesight and how, you know, and, and thinking about these smart flies that Ed's going to be talking about, you know, that I'm going to be summarizing for Ed today where he's talking about, time, you know, 18s, 20s, 24s, and even smaller right? So these fish have amazing eyesight. Um, so that's one thing. The one thing we're going to talk about today, though, is why it's so important um, for presentation. So they can, because of that great eyesight, they can see things. So we're going to lay out a little bit of a framework today, these five takeaways, which I think are going to help you at least get you started and thinking a little bit differently if you haven't been using some of these small flies. And just a reminder, if you want to hear this full episode from Ed, amazing episode, uh, episode 59 of this podcast, we'll have a link in the show notes. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into these five takeaways and tips and actionable advice so you can have better time on the water. Let's get into it. All right, number one, straight up, and we've been talking about this, selective trout require smaller flies. And this is especially true in uh, in the winter months, in the colder months. Sizes 18 through 24s are pretty typical for mimicking uh, the food items out there, midges, mayflies, uh, and mayfly larvae. So this is all pretty standard stuff. So if you're not using the real small stuff, especially in the wintertime, you should be thinking about changing it up. And Ed also notes about embracing, this is embracing the tying of your own customized flies. So I know a lot of people, I'm not sure what percentage of folks out there tie versus don't tie, but if you can get into it, it is going to definitely help your fishing because you're going to be able to observe kind of what's going on in your local water, your local activity, and then you can refine it. Um, to meet that because there's a lot of subtle variations in size and color, things like that. All right. So that's number one. Number two, 
Another big one, uh, obviously casting. And, and Ed said in this, master the slack cast for subtle presentations. So this is key, presenting the fly subtly so you're not spooking these fish. And he says, incorporate slack line casts such as the reach cast and the parachute cast to present the flies naturally without spooking the fish. So if you splash down that fly, even if it's the right size, easily that you could spook these fish. But he says if you can use, use these casts, effectively place them upstream of a feeding fish and allow it to drift into the feeding zone with minimal drag. That's what you want. And that's what a slack line cast is going to do. It's going to allow you to put that in there without having to mend. All right, we're going to zip through this. Number three, another big one we've heard a lot on this podcast is leverage local knowledge through guides. And Ed said, consider hiring a local guide to gain insights into effective techniques and productive spots on, on new waters, right? So, you know, again, there's a double whammy here. If you're new to the area, for sure, a guide is going to give you a few spots, right? Uh, kind of that sort of thing. But also, uh, you know, they're going to give you some techniques and, and things and bugs and insects that you weren't, you know, thinking about. So that's another big part of this, utilizing the local knowledge and, uh, and he says the opportunity to learn about these behaviors, different conditions, and how to adapt your current uh, fly fishing accordingly is going to make a huge difference. So, so that's a huge one. Local guides. Number four, adapt to water conditions and insect hatches. So adapting, again, he says, pay close attention to water levels, clarity, and temperature as these factors significantly influence fish behavior and feeding patterns, right? So all these little subtle variations in temp, clarity, uh, this can all have a big influence on whether, you know, what time of day this is going to happen, right? In the wintertime, you might be starting a little bit later in the day when the water is warm up. So this is all things that you should be recording. And following up on this is to have a journal to record these notes, um, conditions, flies use, activity, because all this knowledge basically, and I know myself, I mean, over the years I've used the journal and then sometimes not as much. And the more you use it, the better you have this resources, the resource to look back on. So when you see those conditions changing, you can kind of look at that uh, journal and reference it for better fishing and to get the right, at least the right starting point on what to use that day. All right. And number five, and then we will be out of here. The number five, uh, number five biggest takeaway and tip from that episode with Ed. And he said, prioritize observation and fishing angle and approach. So prioritize observation in fishing angle and approach. And what he says was spend time observing fish behavior and insect activity before making your first cast to choose the most effective fly and presentation. So again, observation. This is another thing we've heard a lot on this podcast. Take time to see what's going on before you just jump in there and make that cast. And that's going to make a huge difference. Might be the one shot you get at that fish. You don't want to blow it. And Ed also said, experiment with different positions and angles of approach to find the most effective way to present your fly to feeding fish without spooking them. Again, going back to that spooking, you can't always cast you know, downstream to up to the fish. There might be another angle um, you might have to get to a different location to effectively target that fish without spooking them. So that's it. Number five right there. We got the five takeaways. Embrace smaller flies. Uh, he talked about the sizes, especially for winter fishing. Slack casts. Leveraging knowledge with the local guides and adapting to water conditions and hatches. And prioritize observation in your approach. Those are quick. The great thing about this is these are all tips that we've pretty much heard before in different uh, for different species and different guides, but they all apply. So this is a good reminder episode. And Ed says that implementing these strategies can lead to more effective and rewarding fly fishing experiences, especially when targeting selective trout with small flies. All right. And let's get out of here pretty quick, but I'm going to leave a quote. Uh, as always, we try to do one quote from Ed in this episode. And Ed said, in the realm of fly fishing... The subtlety of using small flies often makes the difference between a day of frustration and a day of triumph. Ed Angle, folks, if you want to check out this full episode, you can do that right now. Uh, that's wetflyswing.com slash 059, episode 59. Just search it up. You'll find it. And, uh, and he can take all of these tips, and he's going to go in deeper on that past episode from the Wayback Machine. It's a good one. We'll have a link so you can check it out. And I just want to thank you for checking in today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little snippet, uh, fast action podcast episode. And if you have any feedback for me, you can send me an email, dave at wetflyswing.com. I'd love to hear from you and love to hear what you're thinking here. The idea being with these snippets is that we just give you little reminders as we're going of these tips that we've talked about. Some of them are newbies. Some of them are, are, are oldies, oldies but goodies. And this episode is definitely an older one of our podcasts. And, and I hope that it also highlights some of our past guests, which we can't always get them all back on, 
um, just for time. But these little shorter episodes allow me to highlight some of those good episodes. And as I said, I picked that episode out because it is one of the most listened to and engaged episodes. So a lot of people who listen to that episode actually listen to the entire thing. Um, a lot of times people cut out early on episodes once you get down to the end. But on this one, people listen to the very end. So it was a very engaging podcast episode. I'm going to go listen to it myself again um, and and queue it up. So, um, so I'm going to leave it there. Please follow us on Instagram, Wet Fly Swing, or on Facebook at Wet Fly Swing. And let me know if you're out there. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm going to let you get out of here on this short snippet episode. I hope you have a great afternoon, a great evening, or a great morning wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to talking to you soon.